So if you look at our audio, and I'm going to go ahead and expand the audio with the option plus key. I'm going to move this up a little bit. I'm going to make this full screen with the tilde key next to the one on the keyboard. And you can see that we have our narration, we have our sound effects, and we have our music. And one thing to note about all of this audio, if I were to click on, let's just say this sound effect track right here and zoom in, this one being highlighted, it highlights both the top and the bottom waveform. What this means is that this track right here is stereo. And that means that the audio is coming out of both the left speaker and the right speaker. So let me go ahead and just go back to our regular view. I'm gonna solo the sound effect. I'm gonna play this sound effect scene. I'm gonna expand the audio meters here so you can see them more clearly. And I want you to focus right here on the left and the right channel. So you saw both of those rise up and there was just a subtle difference. Now it's gonna be more clear if I do this with some music. So let me unsolo this, come down to the music track and solo that. Let's play some of this music. So you see how the left side and the right side are bouncing at different levels? That's because the audio coming out of the left speaker is slightly different than the audio coming out of the right speaker. This is a stereo track. Now, if we used a mono track, these would be exactly identical and even. Now, let me come over to this example sequence that I've created here, because I want to talk about this concept in a little bit more detail. So I have a blank sequence, and I have some footage that I've created just for this example. I have a piece of video. I'm going to drag it into my sequence here. And this is just a shot of me standing outside. And here is some audio that I also recorded on a separate little recorder. Let me just drag this in as well. Now, you can see that I have the video, and the video has its own audio track. And I, here I have another audio track. Let me just make these audio tracks a little bit larger so you can see them more clearly. Now, I don't want to go into too much detail about this, although we did briefly talk about it in the match frame lesson, and this is about syncing up the audio. Now, I'm going to go ahead and sync up the audio. Let me just show you what this clip actually looks like. Hey, it's me, Brian, and I'm here. Great. So you saw me clap my hands one time. Now let me show you the audio that we recorded while we were filming this. Hey, it's me, Brian, and I'm... Okay, so here's the cool thing about the way that syncing up audio works. Now I have this clap noise right here. You can see I can actually clap my hands in the shot right there. So my hands clap. And what I can do is I can make an edit point right here. And I can come over to my audio and I can see visually on the timeline where that clap actually occurs. So let me just scan over to that point. So right there is where the clap happens, and I can make an edit point there as well. And now I can zoom out a little bit and just drag these so that the two edit points line up to each other. You may have to do a little bit of shuffling around, like move the video clip over. And now we have the audio that we recorded while we were filming lined up to the video that we recorded. This is because the audio that I recorded for this demonstration was on a separate device than the camera that I was using to record the demonstration. This would essentially be syncing up the audio, and this is a very poor man's way of doing it, but for our demonstration purposes right now, this is all we need to do. Now, if you were curious, I'm just gonna recap this very quickly. I'm gonna remove these little head parts of the clip. We don't need them. And now we have the initial sync point for both of these clips. And what I can do is I can come up to my Premiere Pro Preferences Timeline. I can choose Match Frame Sets In Point. Click OK. And I can match frame this clip here by pushing F. This sets an in point for that clip in the bin. And I can also take this clip down here and I can match frame it from the exact same position. That will set an in point on this clip as well. And now if I wanted to sync these clips up and make them their own independent clip to work with, I can select both of them, right click and choose create multi-camera source sequence. And I can choose to use the in points to synchronize this audio. Now, 
For our demonstration purposes, I am not going to go ahead and do this. This menu is very complicated and has a lot of moving parts in it, and it's something that we will cover in a future lesson, but for the moment right now, all we need to do is get this audio and this video to line up so that we can clearly listen to it. So let me go ahead and get rid of the audio that came from the camera. This was just my iPhone, and the audio doesn't sound very good. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it. And here I have this audio track that was recorded using a Zoom H4n recorder. I'm going to put this up here on this track for us. And let me just play through this clip. Now, before I play, I want you to put on your headphones if they're not already on. And I want to make sure that you have both earbuds in your ears firmly in your ears, please, because you're going to hear a very clear difference between the two different audio sources on this clip. So take a listen, and let me demonstrate why this is very important. Hey, it's me, Brian, and I'm here demonstrating mono versus stereo audio. Now, that clap was so I could sync up the audio to the video in Premiere. And in this audio track, on the right side, we have this boom microphone, and on the left side is this lavalier microphone hooked up to my chest. You'll notice a big difference between those two different channels, which we're going to demonstrate right now. Okay, great. So now that you have proof that I don't spend all day in my dark office, let's go ahead and figure out what's going on with the audio here. Now, if you were listening with your headphones, you probably realized that at some point you heard me bump the lavalier microphone with my hand while I was discussing it. I said that the lavalier microphone would be on your left ear, while the boom microphone up here was going to be on your right ear. So if you didn't hear that, let me just play back that one section. And again, please make sure that you're listening clearly with headphones with both earbuds in the ears now right side we have this boom microphone and on the left side is this lavalier microphone hooked up to my chest. So this is a really good demonstration of what a stereo track actually is. It means that the audio on the left side of the track is different from the audio on the right side of the track. So in this example what happened is that the boom microphone was plugged into the right channel of my two channel recorder. And on the left channel of that same recorder was the lavalier microphone. Now it's not ideal that I can hear the lavalier out of my left ear and the boom out of my right ear. In fact, this is actually a common problem that you may run into while you're beginning to do work on different projects, especially in the documentary or corporate space where you may be conducting an interview with one boom microphone and one lavalier microphone. So this is a stereo track here, and this is some dialogue that was recorded. Now, music is something that should be stereo. It's intended that you hear different instrumentation on the left ear than you might hear on the right ear. But when it comes to something like dialogue, you would not want that to be the case, as demonstrated here. Because we want to be able to do a couple of different things. The first thing that we want to be able to do with this particular clip is fix the problem that's occurring with my lavalier when I smack it with my hand. The second is I want to separate the lavalier and the boom into their own individual channels so that I can hear the same dialogue out of both ears. So let me show you how to go ahead and do that. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you if I were to right click on this clip in the bin, which is this audio down here, and I go up to modify audio channels, this clip was imported as a stereo clip. So what this is saying here, essentially, is that this clip was imported as stereo using the properties of the file when I imported it. Now, if I wanted to turn this into a mono clip, what I could do is I can change the preset from use file and tell it to become mono. Now, this is going to change a little bit. What this essentially says is that now the first channel of the clip will become its own clip. And the second channel of the clip will become its own clip, and it will now be two mono clips as opposed to one single stereo clip. So let me click OK here, and we're going to get this warning message, which basically says that this clip is already being used in a timeline, and that when I go ahead and apply this different clip modification, it's not going to affect the clips that are already in the timeline. So if I click OK, nothing is going to happen. Nothing has changed. However, what has changed is the way that this clip works in the bin. So now if I were to take this clip here and drag it back into my timeline, you can see what's happened. I now have two completely unique clips. I have the left channel and the right channel. Now I'm going to play through this again. I'm going to just make a copy of the video by holding the option key and dragging it. 
And since we had set that endpoint, the endpoints should now line up. And let me go ahead and just play this back. And I want you to, again, listen very carefully with your headphones in both earbuds and just take a listen to how it sounds a little bit different now. Hey, it's me, Brian, and I'm here demonstrating mono versus stereo audio. Now, that clap was so I could sync up the audio to the video in Premiere. And in this audio track, on the right side, we have this boom microphone, and on the left side is this lavalier microphone hooked up to my chest. You'll notice a big difference between those two different channels, which we're going to demonstrate right now. So you probably noticed that this time around, when we played the part of the video where I smack that lavalier microphone, you can now hear it out of both ears. Let me just play it again so you can hear it much more clearly. I have this boom microphone, and on the left side is this lavalier microphone hooked up to my chest. Here's what happened. Now these are both mono tracks, which means that the audio that we hear from this track is going to be heard on both ears evenly and the audio from this track is gonna be heard on both ears evenly. But here's why this is really important, because now this track is only the lavalier microphone or the left channel, and this track is only the boom microphone or the right channel, which means that what I can do is I can fix this audio issue on the lavalier microphone when I smack it by simply lowering the audio of this section or disabling this clip entirely. So let's go ahead and duck out this audio. Ducking is when you take a piece of audio and lower it or remove it from the other audio in your scene. So I'm going to just make a cut. Let me just grab the blade tool here. Make a cut right here and make a cut right here. I'm going to select this clip and I know I don't want to hear any of these smacking sounds. You can see these little spikes. That's me smacking the microphone. Right. So let's just go ahead and take this clip, right click and uncheck the enable. So this turns the clip off. And since we don't want to have a sharp moment where it turns off, I'm going to just make a transition here. Another transition right here. And this is going to essentially leave the lavalier on and then fade it out entirely. The lavalier will be completely turned off right here. And then the lavalier will fade back in. So let me go ahead and play that section for you now. Audio track. On the right side, we have this boom microphone, and on the left side is this lavalier microphone hooked up to my chest. And you can definitely hear that there's a difference, right? With the lavalier turned off, it sounds a little bit different because in this moment right here, we're only hearing the audio from this one boom microphone. So possibly what I might do to resolve that is make another cut right here and another cut right here, copy these transitions, copy and paste and paste. This is command V to paste and command C to copy. I'm going to take the volume of this one and just raise it up using my shortcut key to raise up the volume. And let's go ahead and play this section now. And in this audio track, on the right side, we have this boom microphone. And on the left side is this lavalier microphone hooked up to my chest. So it's not perfect. We can definitely work on it, but it's a little bit better by raising the volume to compensate for losing the audio from the lavalier. So this is something that you may have to do often when you have multiple audio sources in a scene. And this is a great demonstration of what the difference is between mono and stereo audio. So mono audio is something that you hear out of both ears evenly. And stereo audio is something that you hear out of each ear independently. So now what if you have a situation, let me just remove this, where you've done a ton of work. For example, let me just say I've removed the clap and I'm gonna take this beginning part, make an edit, move this over. Let's just cut in some other footage from our promo. Just cut in this shot here, make a little cut right here, put this together. Let me take this part right here, I'll make an edit, move this over, let's grab another clip. How about this one? Make an in point, make an out point, and I can take this and I can do an insert edit. And I can close this up. And then right back here, I have a little blooper at the end. So I'm gonna move this over. And I'll have a little fun shot. Let's just say this shot right here. And I can just do another insert edit and close this up. Now I have all this audio separated. And here's the thing, I can go back to my bin here and I can take this example audio and I can bring it back in but oh my gosh, am I going to have to put this all back together piece by piece? Well, kind of yes and kind of no. There is a very fast way to deal with this, and we're going to use Match Frame again. So first thing I want to do is go back to our Premiere Pro Preferences and Timeline, 
and we're going to uncheck match frame set endpoint. Click OK. Now, this is a great example of how to use match frame in a slightly different way than we've seen before. So, back to this first clip. Now, I realize a little bit too far into the editing process that this should actually be two mono tracks and not one single stereo track. But I've done all this work and I don't want to redo it. So I want to figure out how to get this audio back in place really easily. There are two ways to do it. And then there's one way that I'm going to show you that's a very bad way to do it, just so you can see the difference. So let's begin with the bad way. I'm going to take a copy of this by holding the Option key and dragging it down here. And I'm going to use an effect. I'm going to go to my effects. I'm going to go to my audio effects. I'm going to find fill. So down to F, fill left with right, and fill right with left. If you're confused, don't worry. It's confusing. So I'm going to take fill left with right and drag it over here. Then I'm going to take fill right with left and drag it down here. So what happened? I took the fill left with right effect and put it on this top clip, which means I'm going to fill the left channel with the audio from the right channel. And down here, I did fill right with left, which means I'm going to take the audio from the left channel and fill it with the right channel. And you can see I now have a whole bunch of audio channels and it's incredibly confusing, but the result is exactly what we wanted. Let me play it back for you. Hey, it's me, Brian, and I'm here demonstrating mono versus stereo audio. Now, that clap was so I could sync up the audio to the video in... Now, here is why I don't like this. If you're looking at this screen and you're wondering which one of these is which microphone, don't worry, you're not alone, so am I. I don't like this because I can't tell what I've actually done here. The work that I've done to change up these audio tracks is incredibly confusing to see, and there is a lot of audio on screen to pay attention to. I'm not a huge fan of doing it this way for that reason. Even though it does technically work, I would steer you to avoid this method of adjusting your audio tracks. Instead, let's do that work a little bit more manually, but with a slightly better visual result on your timeline to reduce clutter. So I'm going to go ahead and select both of these, right click and say remove attributes. And this screen here lets me remove things from those clips together. Let me just uncheck volume, channel volume and panner and just say I want to remove the effects that are on those clips. Click OK. So now each of those clips is their own thing. Now in the timeline, what I can do is I can right click on this one, come down to audio channels and I can uncheck the right channel here and click OK. OK, now it's a mono track. Now I can right click on this one, go to audio channels and uncheck the left one and click OK. So now we've done it. We've separated the audio, but it's a lot of clicks to make it happen like that. And we have a whole bunch of these clips here. So I got to duplicate these down and I could probably grab a whole bunch of these audio channel and I can uncheck. See, I forgot which one I checked. So this is actually, again, a very confusing way to work. Let me show you a slightly better and more efficient method. Let me just undo all that work here. I'm going to get rid of this extra one. We're going to use the power of match frame and three point editing to fix our problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use match frame on this clip here. I'm going to select it. I'm going to go to the beginning of it and I'm going to push F. That makes an in point and an out point, just like we demonstrated in the match frame lesson, that fits the in point and out point of the clip on the timeline. And now I can take this little audio dragger and I can either drag it into my timeline or better yet, let's use a shortcut key. Now the shortcut key for overwrite should be the period key on your keyboard next to your question mark. Let me just push that right there. I just cut it in. Now I can skip this one. This one's fine. I can push the down arrow to go to the next clip. I can click on this clip. I can push F to match frame and I can push the period key to overwrite down again, F to match frame, period key to overwrite down again, F to match frame, period key to overwrite. So it's a pretty quick method, especially if you had a really large timeline with a whole bunch of this that needed to be done to it. If you're in a situation where you know what kind of audio elements you're going to be importing into your project and you have an anticipation of what type of audio they are, you might want to go into your Premiere Pro Preferences timeline menu here before you do any actual importing and choose how to import media. So what this says is if Premiere detects that the media is mono, 
you should use the properties of the file. And you should say, yes, definitely import the mono media as a mono file. But in some cases, you may import stereo media, and you can tell Premiere, I want you to import my stereo media as a mono file, as opposed to as a stereo file. This should be useful if, for example, you had that piece of dialogue recorded from the movie set, and the left channel had a microphone attached to it, and the right channel did not, making it completely blank or empty. We wouldn't actually need that right channel, and it would only get in the way of our timeline. So you might choose mono before you import those files. This way, when you import them, they would appear as mono in your bin. Now, there's one more important point. Let me go back to our promo timeline. This one is mono, and this one is stereo. And so they actually need to go into their own specific tracks that are dedicated to the type of audio that they are in your timeline. What that means is when you come over here and you say right-click, Add Tracks. You're going to get this dialog box of what kind of tracks you want to add. We can choose to add video tracks, but since I don't want any more video tracks, I'll change this to zero, and I can choose to add more audio tracks. In this case, I want to add one more audio track. I can choose where to place it. I want to put it before the first track here, and I can choose the track type. Now, standard means it will take on the properties of your timeline. In this case, we have a stereo timeline, so it will make a stereo track. But I can click on this menu, and you can see we have a couple of different track options. One of those track options is mono. So I'm going to make a new mono track here, and click OK. And you can see that it says audio 1, and to the right of it, there's a little icon, and this icon indicates that this is a mono track. All of the audio here that is mono belongs in the mono track. And all of the audio that is stereo belongs in a standard or stereo track. What I like to do to separate these sometimes is add a new track. For example, I'll do add track here. It'll add a track below it. And I like to lock this track. This way, I can't accidentally move this clip into a track that it shouldn't be in. And there's a visual divider in my timeline between the different types of tracks. It's important to keep these labeled. So I might change this one and say, Narration Mono. And this one might say, rename Narration Stereo. And just because these are hard to see, we might just want to shorten this and say NAR for narration. And this one too, NAR. And now we can easily see that this is any time we have mono audio for the narration, and this is any time that we have stereo audio for the narration. Now, the difference between these two things is how Premiere is going to output that audio when you're done. If you were to take mono audio and put it in a stereo track or put stereo audio into a mono track, when Premiere outputs it, it's going to raise or lower the volume of that audio depending on which track you dropped it in. And you may not notice that in your headphones while you're actually editing, although it will occur on the final output. So it's important to get the right audio tracks in the right places and to really understand this concept between mono and stereo. One good way of knowing what type of audio track you have is to come over to your bin. I'm going to push the tilde key next to the one key on the keyboard to expand this. And you can see I have all these data fields here, and one of them says audio info. I'm going to expand this here. And in audio info, it tells me that this is 48 kilohertz, 24 bits, and it tells me that it is a stereo track that's mapped to two mono tracks. Let me open up our sound effects and our music here, and just clean up some of these columns. I'll go back to my slim columns here. So here we just have some simple columns to look at. And you can see I have these different music tracks, and I have this narration track, and here are some sound effects. So this one has been manually modified to be mono, and the rest of these all say that they are stereo. So this is a good way to see what your tracks actually are. And if you go, oh, this one is actually supposed to be stereo, it's my mistake, you can right-click, modify, audio channels, and we can turn it back into a stereo track by either choosing stereo or saying use file, which will use the properties of the file to indicate what it's supposed to be. Click OK. And again, it says it will not affect the clips that are already in your timeline. Click yes to that. And we're back to having it be a stereo track. Hey there, for tons more free editing training, 
head over to our website at filmeditingpro.com slash free training. Here you can download free editing guides along with high quality video training courses created by our team of professional Hollywood editors. Our tutorials cover a wide range of editing topics like cutting awesome movie trailers, editing action scenes, how to work with music and sound design, and a lot more. All of these free guides and videos are available at filmeditingpro.com slash free training. I'll see you next time.